Hey there, it's Pastor Doug, and I'm here to share with you another Jack Tell. Hope that you've been enjoying these. I've been enjoying sharing them. So hopefully together we're going to have a good time. This is about Jack and the king's daughters. Now, there came a time whenever the king had a terrible situation. There was a puzzle going on that he just couldn't figure out. Why, he was always trying to get his daughters to do something, and they just seemed to, well, they just seemed to sleep all day and then uh, sleep all night. And he was getting to missing them. Why, they was getting where they were so drowsy that they wouldn't get up in the morning for breakfast. They'd sleep through the day. Sometimes they'd wake up and eat a little bit for lunch, but mostly they just slept the whole day long. King knew something was not right. He knew there's some kind of a spell or something that was going on. And so he just put out the word, if there's anybody that could figure out what was going on with his daughters, why, he just helped them to themselves and he'd do everything he could to get them on through with a blessing or two. And so there was all kinds of fellas that would show up. Why, they'd usually show up and they'd spark and kind of enjoy and like on one of his daughters. And then in the evening, they'd spend the night and then the next day, they'd be gone. One after another, one kept disappearing, the next one disappeared, and they were never seen again. Why, the word spread and so it was an awful fit. So whenever Jack carried the news back to his house, sure enough, Will and Tom figured that if anybody could help him out, they could. And so first time was for Tom to come down. He went down to the king's house and he got up there and sure enough, he got in the night and started to sleep in and he got woke up by one of the princesses and she said, shh, come with me. Why, what are you going to do? And so Tom went with her. And they went to a secret stairwell that went deep into the kingdom. Why, it got down to where the lower parts ought to be. And there was a gate that they opened up. And there underground was a river. And they went right across that river to the other side. And then they had to go through a magical forest. The first part of that forest had all kinds of branches that were spangled with silver. And the next one had leaves that were spangled with gold. And the next one had sprinkled here and there all kinds of jewels and rubies and diamonds. And then you finally made it to this other part. And then there was another boat that put them across a lake and to a great underworld castle. And there the daughters would spend their nights dancing. Why, Tom enjoyed himself so much. He ate the best food and there were such great people around. All kinds of young men and the women just enjoyed themselves. And at the end of the night... One of those girls came to Tom and said, oh, have you enjoyed yourself? And he says, I have, I have, I have. She said, would you like to do this every night? He says, I would, I would, I would. And so she handed him some punch and he drank it. And before he got through with it, he froze solid. He just stood there, not a move, not a muscle. But the next night, whenever the girls would show back up again, in the early part of the evening, all of those statues would come to life and they could dance and play and sing and have a great time. But by the very edge of morning, before the dawn arises, they would all freeze in place like stone. Well, anytime someone came to see what was going on, why they would ask the king why they were so tired. And the king said, I have no idea. But, but each night I, I give them a new pair of dancing shoes and why they're wore out in the morning. It's the worst thing ever. I know they're going somewhere and I know that they're dancing all night. Or those shoes wouldn't get worn like that. But I can't figure out what's happening to them. And every time I send a fella up there to go with them and sort it out, why they just clean disappear. Well, Tom took that information and he figured he could do it. Why, he took with himself a, a good old cap. He knew if he put his cap on, it'd keep him awake because it always did. He got himself coffee and cups and drank everything he could and he got ready for the night so that he could stay wide awake. Why, surely in the middle of the night, 
uh, one of those girls talked to him and said, hey, we need to come with us. And of course he did. He followed them down to that same place, got on that same boat, went through that river, got to that other side, went through those three forests, got on the other side of it. And sure enough, he danced all night. He saw his brother Tom and Tom says, oh, Will, you're not going to believe it. Best food ever. You're going to feast and feast and feast. You found your fortune and we're going to dance and you're going to see these girls. Look at all the people around here. We're having a marvelous time. But in the early hours of the morning, they froze solid because Will, like his brother Tom, couldn't resist himself and took the cup that was offered him. Well, when the news got back that his brothers was gone, why, well, little old Jack didn't want to have nothing to do with it. He, he didn't want to get down there. He's afraid the same thing might happen to him. And so he was just doing everything he could to help out his mom. Why, he was having to plow the field now and take care of all the animals because his brothers was gone, had to keep doing his own chores, of which one of them was a going into town and getting supplies. And on one day when he was a coming back, he noticed that there was a little old blue bearded man a coming down the road. He said, hello, Jack, how you doing? He said, oh, uncle, good to see you. Hadn't seen you in a while. He says, no, I hadn't seen you neither. What's going on? So Jack started telling him, well, oh, folks are disappearing. It's terrible. He goes, oh, I've been gone so long, the blue bearded man said. I hadn't seen nobody, heard nobody, so it doesn't make any difference to me. But man, I sure could use some help. Why, well, I've just run out of everything. I ain't got no food. I ain't got no work. And I'm an old man, can't work in the field. And Jack says, oh, uncle, I'll take care of you. And so he went on back with him instead of going home and Jack just gave him all of his supplies. Says, I can go back and get some more. We got a little bit for where we're at. You just take this old corn mill and you take these beans. You take everything here. And while I'll go chop you some wood and get you some water. And Jack just did everything he could to take care of that old man. And that old man said, oh, Jack, I, I sure do appreciate it. You've helped me good. And I I'd like to help you out a little bit too. In fact, he went in there and he found an old blanket. And he says, now, Jack, this isn't what it looks like. And you take good care of it. You take this blanket and when the old side's out and you put it around you, why nobody will be able to see you. But you put it on when it's all new on the outside and everybody's going to see you. Jack said, okay. So he took that blanket and he put it up to himself. And when the new was out there, hey, he looked good. But when he flipped it around, he just sunk into nothing. Couldn't see him or the blanket neither. Jack says, oh, la, oh, la, I've never seen anything like this. Don't know how I'm going to use it, but it'll come in handy. And he thanked the old man, and the next morning he got up and went on home. Why, he tried it out on his mom. He put that old blanket around with a bad side out and a ratty part there, and he just went up there and knocked on his door. His mama came up to it and opened it up and looked out and said, hello, who's there? Hello, who's there? And Jack said, it's me, mama. And she just scared to death. Why, she run back into the house. Jack turked off that coat and stepped on in and says, mama, why are you afraid? She goes, where were you? Where did you come from? What happened to you? And Jack said, oh, you're not going to believe it. And so he showed his mama his blanket and what he was able to do with it. And she says, oh, Jack, you got that for a reason. You've had things before and you know it's always for a reason. Why, why you ought to be taking that down and I'm sure that'll help you find the king's daughters. And when it does, you'll find your brothers, Will and Tom, too. Jack said, I'll go, mama, I will. So he got up the next morning and he took his blanket with him and he made sure he put it around his shoulders with a nice side out. And he just went on down to the king's house. There's nobody's around because nobody wanted to have anything to do with that place. Everybody's talking about how it might be hunted, haunted or under some kind of a witch's spell. And so Jack just went up there and says, oh, king, I'm here to help you. He says, oh, I don't know if you could help me, Jack. Everybody here has been puzzled by those girl shoes. I get them new shoes every night and they show up and they're all worn in the morning. And worst thing is, is that nobody ever comes back from staying here. Oh, Jack, I don't want you to go up there. No, siree. You're a good fella and I want to keep you around. You've helped me out all the time. But, but Jack, I don't want you getting involved in this one. He says, oh, I'll sort it out. It'll be good. And he said, what do you mean? And so Jack showed him by turning that out, and he just disappeared right before the king. The king says, oh, law, where are you at? He reached out and touched him. He said, oh, there you are. You're really there. And, and patted him around. I can feel that blanket. Jack pulled it down, and he could see him. He goes, oh, that's that might do it, Jack. You might be able to do what nobody else could do. 
So the king invited his daughters down, and Jack put on that blanket with the good side out. And when they came down, they all said, oh, hi, Jack, how you doing? They got to introducing each other. He goes, oh, girls, you look tired. And they go, oh, we are. Why, we're just as tired as could be. We can't understand why. Every night, things just seem to go away. We go to bed on time, but we get up and just exhausted, and we just have to sleep through the day. Jack says, oh, why is that? They says, we don't know. We can't tell what's going on. So Jack says, well, I'll sleep here for a few nights and see if I can't help you out. So Jack did that. Why? He just said, I'll just be right here and around and, and, and you don't worry about it. So the girls first came in and they said, uh, middle of the night, he just put on the outside, pretended like he was going to sleep. And sure enough, those girls came in and said, oh, Jack, wake up. You want to go with us? We need you to go. He said, where are you going? He said, oh, we're going to go to a great ball and dancing. And they were all dressed up beautiful. And Jack says, oh, I'd like to go, but, you know, I'm awful tired. You're just going to have to go without me, maybe tomorrow night. And those girls said, suit yourself. And so they all left. And as they was going down, Jack lay back. When the last one had closed the door, he turned his blanket inside out, and he went up there, and he creaked it open. One of them turned around when she heard the creak, and she went back and says, Oh, the door's still open. We better go close it. She went up there, pulled the door shoot, closed, but Jack was already on the other side of it. He just followed them down the stairs. As he got going through, every now and then he'd stumble or stop, and they'd look around, but they didn't see him, and so they knew that they could just keep going on. When they got up there to that first place and got on the boat, Jack just stepped in with them. It sunk down a little, and they looked around, but none of them reached back to fill, and they just went on across. And as they was going across, Jack reached in, and he just couldn't help himself and broke off one of those silver bangled leaves, and he put it in his pocket. It disappeared too. And they just kept walking through. When Jack got there, he stayed on the outside of that place, but he looked in the window and there they all were, dancing through the night. Jack couldn't believe it. Why? He said, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Can't go in there. I'm just going to have to figure out what's here. And so he watched and watched. And sure enough, through the night, he noticed that all of them was going over and drinking that punch. But at the morning, as the girls got ready to leave, he noticed that there was an old witch that came through. And she was the one that was leading the girls out. And she was the one that was inviting them to come and stay. And she was the one with the flicker of the morning light turned everyone to statues. Why, as they set coming out, Jack got himself inside that boat. And whenever all the girls got on and rowed across, he was the first one out. Got into the next one. As they went across to the gate, he just stood there as they unlocked it and went up the stairs. They were so tired from dancing all night, they just collapsed. And they had no recollection of what had happened. Couldn't remember a thing because that's how that drink worked on them. And so Jack knew what it was. And for breakfast the next morning, he told the king that he ought to bring them down. And as they come down, he'd taken out that silver leaf and he put it on the table. And when the girls saw it, they knew that something wasn't right. And they wanted to know where that came from. The king says, oh, I don't know. I've never seen it before. And Jack lied. Me neither. Why, it sure is a pretty thing. He picked it up and looked at it and says, why, it's almost magical, you might say. Why, look at that workmanship. It looks like a real leaf. And they said, yes, it does. And that night they invited Jack to go with them again, but he wouldn't go, but he followed them down. And as he got to that forest with gold leaves, he broke off a little branch and put it in his pocket, and he went through the night. And that night as he watched, he noticed this time, that it was the witch who was always a-filling up the punch, and all of them was a-drinking it, and he knew that had to be the source of things. And when he made itself all the way through, and those girls knew no better the next morning, he made the king wake them up. They didn't want to come to breakfast, but sure enough, he made them get there. And when they saw that gold leaf on the table, they was all suspicious. And they said, oh, surely you've got to go with us. You've got to go with us. And Jack said, no, I'd rather not. And it happened a third time. And of course, he got a branch of those jewels and put some in his pocket and it went on his way. And early that night, this time, not only had seen the witch and seen the punch, 
but she's seen how she cast the spell over it in advance. And he knew that if he could just get to her before she cast that spell the next day, then he would be able to break things wide open. And so that fourth night, Jack let the girls come and invite him, but he kept that blanket on the good side out, and so it just acted like a blanket. And when they came in, he said, Oh, I think I'll go with you this time. And they was delighted. Why, they just came one after another. And they went down, and as they were going through the fourth, the forest, Jack turned on that blanket, and whenever the girls went around to pull him forward, they didn't know what happened to him. Why, they searched around and searched around, and for themselves, they couldn't find him, and they was befuddled. Why, they got into the boat and went on their way, not even knowing that Jack was in it with them. They got to the door, and they opened it up, and Jack slid right on inside this time with them. The first thing they did was to go over to the witch and tell her that they had invited a fellow, but he had disappeared before they got there. And that witch's eyes started opening wide. And she started looking around, trying to figure out what it was and where it was and how it was and, and trying to find him. And she went to looking everywhere that he could go. And while she was going around, Jack made his way in to where that punch was. And he poured it all out. And he replaced it with the crystal clear water and he had cut into himself and found a place to fill it up with. And whenever the witch came in, she looked to see that that punch was filled and then she started a serving it to everyone, not knowing that it wasn't her brew. And while everyone drank it, you could tell that they looked different. And they looked around themselves, and they didn't know what was happening or what was going on. And they weren't able to dance, and they, they wanted to know why they was there. And they was all kind of a coming out of a, a trance-like state. And they was wanting to get back to the king and to his castle. And, and they saw the girls, and they were trying to say, we got to go. We got to get you out of here. And the girls didn't know what to do. And whenever the witch realized that everything was coming apart, that that fellow that had disappeared had to be around there. And she she started a running around and trying to find him, but Jack kept that blanket right over him where he couldn't be seen. And finally, whenever that witch got real close and she went over there and got to the punch and realized it wasn't what she'd put in there, she started to cast herself a brew, and that's whenever Jack said, I know what to do. Why, he unveiled himself right before her, and whenever he did, she just opened her eyes and said, how did you get here? Where did you come from? And Jack says, oh, it doesn't matter where I I've come from. What matters is where you've come from. And that witch says, well, you know where I've come from. He says, no, I don't. Why are you here? And why are you doing this? And that witch started to say something. And then she looked around and she says, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I'm here, but I know what I'm doing. And she started to cast her spell. And that's whenever Jack took that blanket and she throwed it over with the clean side out. And this time, instead of just saying there, why it just landed on that witch and it just sunk right down. With the inside of it that made things disappear, instead of just a vision, it just went right over that witch and it just made her go away and went straight to the ground. Jack picked it up and she wasn't there no more. He turned it this way and turned it that way and he didn't know what to do. But that's whenever the spell that broke started shaking the foundations of that underside place. And Jack knew that the spell had been broken. He got everyone says, we got to get out of here. They took that boat back and forth and back and forth until they got everyone off into the forest. He said, let's go, let's go. They got them through the different forests, went through the one that was spangled with all kinds of jewels and then through the gold and then through the silver. One by one, they got them across over to the gates. And finally, at the very end, Jack looked back, and that undersea ground pass 
castle was just fall into place. He knew it wasn't long before it was going to catch up to them. And at the very last, as they was going up the stairs, they was just hurrying as all that they could. And Jack looked back and he noticed that everything was a coming right up to him, falling and breaking and coming under place. And Jack just took that blanket and throwed it toward it. And it disappeared into everything that was going away, just as Jack and everyone got on the other side of the last gate. And whenever it all collapsed, it must have all gone away. Because they never did find that passage again. And those girls never did work all night as dancing and singing and being happy. But everybody that was in that underworld place was relieved to be back home again. And everybody was glad to receive theirs back, especially Will and Tom. Why, Jack embraced them. He said, I didn't know if I ever see you again, but here we are together. Why, the king couldn't believe it. He'd got his daughters back, and they was not wearing out their shoes ever again. Jack told the king all about it and what had happened. And the king says, oh, law, Jack, I'm sorry you lost lost your blanket. I really am. He says, oh, don't worry about that. I'm sure that one day when I'm out seeking my fortune, I just might find it again. And until then, I'm just glad that we has all got back from that underworld place. And that's the end of that. Now, I tell you that because it's really true that there are people who are under a spell. And they're in a spell in this world as if they are uh, just trying to live for themselves. And they don't know that they are missing out on the real and best part of life. That part of life when you are full of your senses and you're able to see and hear and talk and enjoy. That you're able to uh, love and you're able to embrace and you're able to live your life even if it's just a simple one in a cabin where you got work to do. And I tell you that story because the scriptures remind us that God has given each of us a place and a purpose, and he is with us through each and every day. And we just need to keep our sights on him. But there are people that through his grace and through his mercy and through his victory, he will set free from the dungeons of the lies that Satan puts in their lives that they might live free indeed. And that's the end of that.